obviously prefer normal democratic and constitutional politics, but if it comes to it, prefer the deep state to the Trump state. Jesus fucking Christ. I spoke about the deep state in my previous video about the CIA working with Democrats to derail Trump. In that case, using a ridiculous story about Trump hiring hookers to pee on a bed in a Russian hotel that Obama supposedly stayed in, among other insane charges. What I didn't realize was how the GOP is working right along with them. Bill Kristol is the editor of the Weekly Standard and supposedly a conservative guy, which in the U.S. typically means smaller government and less power to the feds. So for him to tweet this out is beyond disappointing to me. And it kind of shows how the, what I call the media government industrial complex is now taken firm root and they've thrown away all caution and pretense into the wind. The deep state now has its first scalp and it did it through possibly illegal means. Michael Flynn, who has now the shortest tenure in history as a national security advisor, resigned recently. The story the gleeful media is reporting is that he lied about his conversation with Russia's ambassador to Mike Pence. Eli Lake on Bloomberg, not necessarily a right-leaning publication, mind you, had this to say. As White House senior counselor Kellyanne Conway told NBC's Today show on Tuesday, misleading the vice president was really the key here. That sounds about as credible as when the president told CIA employees that the media had invented the story about his enmity towards the spy agency, not even two weeks after he had taken to Twitter to compare the CIA to Nazis. It's about as credible as President Donald Trump's insistence that it didn't rain during his inauguration or that millions of people had voted illegally in the election he had just won. Exactly. Why the hell is this moment such a problem that he had to resign or fired? Take your pick. It's not even clear that Flynn lied. He said in his resignation letter they did not deliberately leave out elements of his conversations with Ambassador Sergei Kishfakiu when he recounted them to the Vice President Mike Pence. The New York Times and Washington Post reported the transcript of the phone call reviewed over the weekend by the White House could be read different ways. One White House official with knowledge of the conversation told me that the Russian ambassador raised the sanctions to Flynn and Flynn responded that the Trump team would be taking office in a few weeks and would review the Russian policy and sanctions. That's neither illegal nor improper. A better explanation here is that Flynn was just thrown under the bus. His tenure as National Security Advisor, the briefest in U.S. history, was rocky from the start. When Flynn was attacked in the media for his ties to Russia, he was not allowed by the White House to defend himself. Over the weekend, he was instructed not to speak to the press when he was in the fight for his political life. His staff was not even allowed to review the transcripts of his call to the Russian ambassador. But why was this out there in the first place? Why do we know about it? How did this story come to pass? How did a lie by the National Security Advisor to the Vice President of the United States become public knowledge so damn quickly? Why does the press know about it? It's very rare that reporters are ever told about government-monitored communications of U.S. citizens, let alone senior U.S. officials. The last story to hit Washington was in 2009 when Jeff Stein, then of CQ, reported or intercepted phone calls between a senior APAC lobbyist and Jane Harmon, who at the time was a Democratic member of Congress. Normally, intercepts of U.S. officials and citizens are some of the most tightly held government secrets. This is for good reason. Selectively disclosing private details of a conversation monitored by the FBI or NSA gives the permanent state, the deep state, the power to destroy reputations from the cloak of anonymity. This is what police states do. So normally the agents or officials who monitor these conversations are anonymous. We've seen enough movies where spies are outed and then they become at best useless as spies or at worst targeted for death. The flip side is that they can work from anonymity. These guys are on both sides of the aisles and they are all in agreement that Trump must go. So they leaked it. And this was their first shot across the bow. Flynn was a fat target for the national security state. 
He has cultivated a reputation as a reformer and a fierce critic of the intelligence community leaders he once served with when he was the director of the Defense Intelligence Agency under President Barack Obama. Flynn was working to reform the intelligence industrial complex, something that threatened the bureaucratic prerogatives of his rivals. These unelected bureaucrats have real power. Guys, I know we love to spout off about big towels, but these guys have no real influence. The media and these bureaucrats do. They are leaking classified info about Trump's conversation with world leaders, with internal White House staff, and they're putting it out there to embarrass him and possibly to impeach him. This has never happened before, at least not to this level. You idiots, you leftist progressives yelling fascists about Trump, you don't know what you're fucking talking about. Getting rid of two regulations for every one that gets created by its very nature will lessen government power. Pulling out the power that these bureaucrats have will lessen government power over your life. Somehow, this way of thinking is called fascism by the left. This is insanity. This is what the media government industrial complex through misinformation and propaganda is putting out so that we get to a point that we actually riot for more government control over our lives. Berkeley is the home of free speech is not trying to stop it. They're enforcing it. They're loving it. The only way to control speech is to empower someone to take it away, and that's usually the government. I can't believe I'm having to explain this to people like they're five years fucking old. You think you are freeing yourselves by handing over your ability to choose to the government? Your choice of what words you can say because someone might offend you. How much money you can make because someone might make more. Because others might make choices you don't like, you're willing to destroy everyone's ability to make them. You fucking morons. You are destroying yourselves by supporting this shit. What do you think? You're sticking it to the GOP? Half of them are working against Trump too, especially those in the deep state. You are cheering these illegal leaks in hopes of an impeachment. Flynn may have deceived the vice president who then went on TV with bad information and that's embarrassing to say the least. I don't have a problem with his removal. But the way it was done was scary. Here's from the New York Post. In the one sense, the larger system of America's checks and balances worked. The Trump White House couldn't ignore the Flynn problems because they went public. On the other hand, the officials who made the problems public did so using raw information that was in their possession for reasons we don't know, and they may not have a right whatsoever to know. The information might have come because the U.S. intelligence com community has an active interest in the Russian official to whom he talked. Or it could have come because the FBI had been pursuing some sort of secret investigation and had received authorization to monitor and track his calls and his discussions, meaning Flynn. If this was intelligence, the revelation of Flynn's meeting just revealed something to the Russians we shouldn't want revealed which is that we were listening in on them and doing so effectively. And if it was an FBI investigation, then the iron principle of law enforcement, that evidence gathered in the course of an investigation must be kept secret to protect the rights of the American being investigated, was just put through the fucking shredder. Keeping our intelligence gathering assets hidden from those upon whom we are spying is a key element to our national security. And as for playing fast and loose with that confidential information on American citizens, no joke, people. If they can do it to Mike Flynn, they can do it to you. You know, as much as I despised Obama, the one thing I couldn't stand was the whole bogus birth certificate issue. It was used as an attempt to remove him from office, and it was a sad attempt, really. It, it didn't have a chance of going anywhere because no one in the deep state was going to work through it, even if it was true he wasn't born here. But let's say it was true. Let's just pretend that it was. Removing him from office in what my mind was a complete technicality was stupid. He and the left would have martyred him, figuratively speaking, and more importantly, he wouldn't have been defeated because his ideas sucked. These guys are doing basically the same thing, but they are trying to find evidence that isn't there. But since they are all in the halls of government, they have the power to make it happen. The CIA... 
the FBI, the State Department, and the willing press is looking for anything they can to destroy a sitting president. That frightens me a lot more than what a MGTOW on YouTube is talking about. All right, guys, hit that subscribe button. If you like what you see, press that like button, share these videos out, help me get a little bit more uh, subscribers going, help this channel grow. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you're having a lot of fun. It's coming along. Take a look there at the list. Those are all the ways you can get a hold of me. So if you want to send me hate mail, you want to send me email, you want to send me hate tweets, you want to send me sex tweets, I'll take them all. And please, start commenting down there. Let me know what you think. Talk to you later.